Okay, the EU is in the process of formulating rules for AI as part of its digital plan. Different AI systems will be categorized based on the risk they pose to individuals. Let's get a quick overview of the timing, scope, and results of the EU AI Act first. 1. Timing. The Act is presently in draft form and is subject to further legislative processes. Recently, on June 14, 2023, members of the European Parliament approved the Parliament's stance on the AI Act. Negotiations with EU member countries in the Council will now commence to finalize the law, with the aim of reaching an agreement by the end of this year. 2. Scope. The Act lays down rules governing the development, market placement, and use of AI within the European Union. 3. Results. The Act primarily focuses on AI used in the public sector and law enforcement. It aligns with the General Data Protection Regulation and extends its reach internationally, allowing for potential fines of up to 6% of a company's global annual turnover. So, what are these rules? They are divided into three levels of risk, unacceptable, high, and limited. AI systems deemed to pose an unacceptable risk are considered dangerous and will be banned. Examples include AI that predicts crime, manipulates behavior, categorizes people based on personal information, or uses real-time facial recognition. High-risk AI systems could influence safety or infringe upon people's fundamental rights. These are divided into two categories. AI used in safety-related products such as toys and medical devices, and AI used in eight specific areas, including biometric identification and law enforcement. All high-risk AI systems will undergo checks before being put on sale and continually throughout their lifespan. Limited-risk AI systems should meet basic transparency requirements that empower users to make informed decisions. For instance, they should inform users when the content has been generated by AI, strive to prevent the creation of illegal content, and disclose details about the copyrighted data used for their training. Researchers at Stanford have analyzed the EU AI Act rules and evaluated 10 main AI platforms accordingly. Within this study, 22 requirements are defined from the European Union's EU AI Act for assessing AI tools like ChatGPT. You can find the link to the Stanford study in the video description. Let's go through the main points. Openness. If someone develops an advanced computer program, AI, they need to list it in a public place for everyone to see. They should provide clear information about who made it, what it can do, and what it can't do. They should also explain what type of information was used to train the AI, including any copyrighted materials. Carefulness and checking. The developers of these AI systems need to contemplate and share what could potentially go wrong with their AI and what measures they've taken to prevent these incidents. They also need to reveal how well the AI performs, what tests it has passed, and how much electricity it consumes. Rules and responsibility. The creators of these AI systems must retain all their work and evidence that they've complied with all the necessary rules for 10 years. This includes demonstrating that they used only legally permitted information to train the AI. Respect and goodness. AI systems should respect people's rights, privacy, and integrity. They must treat everyone equally and contribute positively to our society and environment. They should also make it clear when people are interacting with an AI, not a human. The study evaluated 10 major foundational model providers. The results reveal a considerable difference in compliance among providers. Some score less than 25%, AI21 Labs, LF Alpha, Anthropic, and only one provider scores at least 75%, Hugging Face, Big Science. However, even the highest scoring providers have significant room for improvement. The main identified gaps are copyrighted data. Many companies train their AI models using internet data, some of which is likely copyrighted. It's often unclear if this is legally acceptable, especially for data with specific licenses. This ambiguity leads to minimal disclosure about the copyright status of the training data. Compute energy use. Companies don't consistently report on energy consumption and emissions related to their AI models. Although quantifying the energy required to train these models is a contentious issue, it's widely agreed that current reporting is not reliable. Risk mitigation. The risks associated with AI models are immense, including malicious use, unintentional harm, and systemic risk. While many companies enumerate these risks, few detail their mitigation strategies. Evaluation testing. There's a lack of standards for assessing AI models' performance, particularly concerning potential harm or robustness. 
While there have been calls for more evaluations, setting these standards remains a work in progress. Some individuals worry that big tech companies might be monitoring us too closely. Others think it's beneficial that the government is attempting to protect us from this. But are those crafting the rules equipped enough to formulate effective ones? And how can we establish rules that protect us without hindering the advancement of technology? What do you think? Let me know about your thoughts in the comments. Hit the subscribe and like buttons to support our channel. Thank you.